Ha ha! They said I would never get an Andretti to appear on my channel, and now I have. Hey followers, this is your boy, Doug Kenny here. Today, I am very proud to say that I have defied the odds told to me by my friend Victor a while ago, and I have been able to get an Andretti on my channel. His name is uh, Jeff Andretti, and he's, where are you at right now, Jeff? Well, I'm in Arizona. I've been living out here for a couple of years now. Ah, pretty cool. That's, I'm in Arizona too, although yeah. somehow I'm at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad to have you on the channel. I really appreciate the time you've made for me. No, it's great to be here. Yeah. So uh, I start these interviews with a simple question, which is, uh, how did you get into racing? <laughs> well, you know, how did you get in racing? Well, my father, um, you know, obviously we were born into it. Um, you know, the, the obvious question is, would I take up my father's profession? And the answer was yes. And I tried to, uh, got into racing through go-karting and, and, uh, Worked my way up from there and started achieving success there and, and uh, won races and championships there. And so then I decided to move up from there to, to driving schools and um, do all the proper channels to get myself prepared to, to make the, each step to get to the top of the, the chart, which is the IndyCar series. And, and I was able to achieve that uh, through, you know, three years of just uh, hard work and, and, moving up as hard as, as best as I could and, and achieving as much as I could in the smaller ranks to get myself ready to be able to make that big step. And, and I was able to do it. That's really cool, man. <laughs> I can hear a little bit of Mario's voice in your voice a little bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've had people say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. So where are you originally from? I'm originally from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. That's where I was born and raised uh, there in that little town. And uh, that's where my father, when he came over from Italy, that's where they migrated to and and stayed there ever since. And that's where he still resides. And, um, you know, I'll go back there uh, as much as I can just to, to visit. Pretty cool, man. So mm -hmm. after that, I must ask you, uh, what was it like growing up as an Andretti? <laughs> Well, it's, you know, like I've said many times to different people uh, when they've asked this question is, you know, what what is normal uh, growing up in this family is, you know, my father was was my father, um, treated me like a father. And and so, I mean, as far as anything being that much different growing up in this family, um, I, I that's all I knew. <laughs> so it was normal to me. Pretty cool that you had a normal childhood from what you've said. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, you tried to anyway. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So did you witness any of the Indy 500s that your dad participated in with, with, you know, him winning in 1969 and then having an up and down relationship with the track after that? <laughs> well, I've been to many of the races, you know, especially as a kid, uh, even in 1969, I was there at the racetrack, uh, as a kid, I don't remember much about it, but, uh, but, you know, through the years, uh, you know, growing up around it, I was, I was in Indianapolis a lot and I experienced a lot of my dad's up and downs at the speedway. Um, and of course everybody calls it the Andretti curse and, um, I don't call it a curse. It's just, you know, we just don't have luck there, but you know, it's just, that's a tough place to tackle and, and achieve. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, did you witness any of the incredible races he was a part of, like, like spin and win with Danny Sullivan and, and then the thrilling finish between John Cock and Mears? Did you witness any of those races? Oh, yeah, I was there for those races. It was very exciting. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, the spin to win was just, uh, it was a classic, you know, Dad baited uh, Danny Sullivan into turn one, and Danny took the bait and and ended up. Unfortunately, he spun and saved it. <laughs> wasn't supposed to be the case. He was supposed to save it, but uh, the miraculous part about it was the fact that my father didn't get into him. Um, 
while he was spinning. So, uh, but, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, again, it's just uh, the track just shows you that it takes a lot of luck uh, at that speedway. And Danny certainly had luck on his side that day. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So when did you start getting into being a race car driver? Well, I really got serious when I was 16 years of age, when I could start driving myself physically on the street, I started uh, getting into the, the ranks of racing. I mean, I started younger than that, but I kind of, I stopped for a while to, to, to be a kid, <laughs> a normal kid, as we, we talked about. Um, and, but when I really got serious, when I turned 16, um, I decided to really give it a go and, and never look back from that time. Good for you, man. How did you get your ride with Kanaska Racing and Vic Sifton? Um, you know, well, you know, obviously the Indy Light Series was following the series, uh, the IndyCar Series, and I was looking to rekindle my career. And uh, I saw there was an opportunity uh, with Kanaska. And Kanaska was very successful uh, in, in Atlantic racing, and, and they were going to make an Indy Lights run, and it was a possibility of maybe them even making an IndyCar run at some point and so i heard through the rumor mill and we we approached victor and uh hey you know would you you know consider doing a deal and and we put the deal together and and unfortunately we didn't have you know had the luck that we, we thought we were going to have there um we had a lot of misfortunes that year um you know it's uh i wish we would have been able to have a do-over with that deal because i really feel that we would we would achieved a lot more okay Makes sense. So what happened at Indianapolis in 92? Did you have a horrific accident there, I believe? Yeah, I did. I had a very bad accident there. Uh, we had a, um, a, a wheel kit, hub cage break in my right rear tire, and uh, the tire actually come off the, the, the race car uh, on entry to turn two, and uh, unfortunate situation that turn got me you know, spinning at a 360 degree angle. Um, put me head on towards the wall and of course made direct impact and um, unfortunately from that point you know it uh, sustained a lot of bad leg injuries uh, and it was, certainly it was uh, quite the recovery from there uh, it was about a year and a half of uh, recovery uh, as far as rehab and everything to be able to learn to walk again <laughs> yeah did you have any doubts that you were going to walk again at the time or no, there was no doubt. I mean, the first thing out of my mouth to my doctor was, you know, when can I get back in the car? Um, you know, but actually it was two things. I said, uh, when am I going to walk again? He says, yes. I said, okay, when can I get back in the car? <laughs> <laughs> so it was really, uh, and then people don't even realize this, but I was actually back in a race car at the end of that year. Um, I was testing a prototype car down in Sebring that year and then actually competed in January of that next, the following year at uh, Miami Grand Prix uh, when it was the IMSA. I, I actually competed in that race. <laughs> ah, is it true that you drove for AJ Foyt not too long after getting into a little scuffle with him the year before? Is that true? Or? <laughs> that is true. I mean, we, uh, we, uh, we, we had a disagreement. Uh, well, he had more had a disagreement with me, um, but uh we made up at the end of that year. He actually apologized to me, uh, actually at the victory banquet, he made a public apology to me for, uh, saying the things that he said. Um, and you know, and it was all good. I mean, I, I enjoyed driving for AJ in 92. Uh, unfortunately we had this incident, but, uh, it was still great to, to work with him. Um, you know, AJ w was a wealth of knowledge and he certainly knew the speedway. So, uh, it was great to have, you know, not only AJ Floyd, but we had, of course, I had my dad too and my brother to be able to uh, work with and and pick their brains um, as well. So it was it was great. It was a lot of fun. I uh, learned a lot that that month. Uh, I just wish uh, we would have better success. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So I must ask. Uh, this probably wasn't on your mind right away because of what mm -hmm. you experienced at Indy. Mm -hmm. But when did you first see the photo finish between Al Unser Jr. and Scott Goodyear? <laughs> well, I saw that uh, later on. I saw the replay of the race. Um, you know, obviously I was in the, uh, 
intensive care unit uh, we're trying to recover from the actual injuries. You know, the first night was, was quite tough, uh, you know, because you're nursing not only uh, the leg injuries, but also nursing concussions. And, and so um, didn't really realize what was going on until uh, the next day, really. Yeah. What was Michael's reaction to that finish when he broke that fuel pump with a few laps to go? He was devastated. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, as far as family was, you know, we always say things happen in threes. Unfortunately, that day was, it, it, it held true. Uh, you know, Michael was the third, you know, uh, problem we had that day for our family. And, uh, you know, dad was the other one. Um, so, you know, it was, it was, you know, the first thing out of my mouth to my brother is, well, tell me at least you won the race, you know, and he almost broke out in tears, you know, because it was, uh, it just was a dark day for our family that, and it, you know, what, if we can survive that, we can survive anything. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the attitude that a lot of people have on my uh, show, relentless and mm-hmm. unstoppable. Like they're mm-hmm. relentless in their challenges and unstoppable and mm-hmm. achieving their goals. Right. Right. I mean, you know, perseverance does pay off, you know, it's uh you can uh, you, you can choose two different paths in life. You know, you can be bitter. Or you can just move on and, and just make the best of what you have. And that's exactly what I chose. Good for you. So what are you doing these days in, in, as far as being a driving instructor? Well, I do. I still do some teen defensive driving uh, instructing up in, uh, in, in Vegas. Anyway, I was uh, work for um, for. Uh, driver's edge um, and doing team defensive driving courses, but also um, in the last, well, they say the last four or five years, I've been working on, I, I started a, a nonprofit uh, doing steam education programs for, uh, to try and get kids excited about taking up steam education, uh, steam career paths in school. Um, we work with middle schoolers and uh, we have high school students uh, helping us be mentors for the middle schoolers. So it's kind of, it's been a really fun program doing that trying to inspire the, our youth of this world to be able to um, make really a sense of what they want to do in life. And it's nice to be able to do that and be able to give these kids the tools to, to make them realize that they might've been good at something that they didn't even realize they were good at, meaning like math and science. Uh, sometimes these kids don't realize it until they're actually exposed to it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so that's, I've been work, working with this uh, and I have a partner in this and uh, we've been at the company's called team steam nation. Um, and uh, the initiative's called Andretti fast track experience. So you'll be, you'll be hearing about that uh, here uh, in the near future uh, because we're going to be unleashing uh, some uh, video episodes um, to be able to use in the, in this classroom connected to activities for the teachers to use it as a teaching tool. So be you'll here. be seeing this. For sure. That's really good to hear. So do you have a YouTube channel at all? Well, we do. It's Team Steam Nation uh, is our is our YouTube channel, but it's it's uh, it's all these activities aren't on there at, the, at this point. But uh, there'll be in due time. We will have a, uh, hopefully we'll have ourselves a YouTube channel that people will be able to go to, to to even look at the activities. But you can go to Andretti uh, FX dot org um, and you'll be able to see the actual activities and the videos or how it actually works. So if you, if if anybody's interested, you can go there to andrettyfx.org. Sounds good. Everybody, Mm -hmm. the link is right here. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) All righty. So to conclude this interview followers, let's have a moment of silence for uh, Aldo Andretti and John Andretti who passed away within a one year span of each other. All righty, I wanna thank you, uh, Jeff, for appearing on the channel today and we'll keep in touch. Okay, sounds good. Enjoy your day.